Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode I'm happy to get to show you what's new in Adobe InDesign CC in the February 2015 update. That's right, as a Creative Cloud member you know you're used to getting these updates on a regular basis. It's February so why not have an update to InDesign. Uh, one of the things that people have asked me about time and time again since I've been showing it in the other products is about Creative Cloud libraries. In other words, you see the benefits of libraries in Photoshop and Illustrator and in the mobile apps. And of course, the question becomes, well, when does InDesign get it? And that answer is today. Let's, uh, here, let's go to InDesign. We've got our InDesign uh, program open here. I'm just going to go ahead and go to my window menu where we now have the ability to bring up the Creative Cloud libraries panel. Once I bring up the panel, it will go and find my existing libraries um, that I already have here. I, of course, have the ability to create a new library, but these are Creative Cloud wide, meaning that if I create a library here, it's not just for InDesign. That library would show up in my other products as well. I also have the ability um, to collaborate. That means the ability to share a library with someone else. So now if I create this cool InDesign layout or this cool thing in InDesign, I don't have to worry about sending them the InDesign document. I can just add it to a library, share that or collaborate that with them or share that library with them, and they will be able to drag those elements onto their InDesign page. So you can kind of like create you know, these recipes or these things for people to be able to do in InDesign uh, just by using the library feature. So let's go ahead and create a new document. And once I create the document, I'm just going to go ahead and say that's uh, not facing pages, new document. And then I'm just going to go ahead and draw a frame or let's actually just draw a shape. So we're not going to really do anything with that frame. So we we'll just use one of the shape tools and then we'll use the direct selection tool and we'll grab the corner point here and just simply delete it. So now that becomes more of a triangle and then we'll go to our fill. And what I want to do with that is use one of the colors that I grabbed from Adobe Color on my iPhone. So using the mobile um, app to sample colors around me, sync those colors to my Creative Cloud libraries long ago, and those color themes are now available for me to use in InDesign as well. So now I've got my color there, the next thing I'd love to do is to go ahead and pull out a logo. So if I scroll down the library, you'll start to see the things that you can use, like colors, and in some cases, you may see things in your library that are part of that library that you can't use. In other words, I can't use brushes in InDesign because it's not a drawing application. It's not a painting application. So although I can create brushes with apps like Adobe Brush CC on my iPad or iPhone I, and use those brushes in Adobe Sketch and Photoshop and Illustrator, it doesn't make sense to have those brushes available in InDesign. So they're, here they're grayed out. Now, if I keep scrolling down, I do have the ability to use graphics. So if I want to grab my logo, which I was in Photoshop and I added it to my library, I can just go ahead and drag that in. I get the same place gun, which gives me the ability to scale it proportionally and then put it on the page. And of course I can change my display performance to make that a high quality display. So we get a nice uh, preview of that. And of course I can then move it around and put it wherever I want. The next thing I can do is let's say that I want to grab a graphic that I don't have. In other words, I haven't found it yet. So let's go ahead and go up to the Creative Cloud menu. We'll go to Assets and we'll come down to Market and we'll do a search and we'll search for a picture of a camera. And um, of course that will start showing me all the market assets that have the word camera or keyword camera. And I can scroll down. I know there's a nice DSLR in here somewhere. There it is. And I can just simply say, add that to my library. And it will go ahead and then sync that to my library and make it available to me. Um, and once that's there, and here it comes, and now I can go ahead and just drag that right into InDesign. So grabbing stock art, using it here in InDesign, and again, changing my display performance to a high quality display, display to make that look better. And of course, uh, that's vector, so it's infinitely scalable. It has no background. I can put it wherever I want. Now, let's say that I love this handy dandy layout that I created, and I now want to share this. Of course, we will uh, go in and we'll do things like make the logo smaller, and we'll put that up here. And I now want to 
remember or have this layout to be able to use on other pages or share with others. Well, I can select the whole thing, just all the elements on the page, and then I can go in and I can say, you know what, I'd love to add this to my library. So now add it all of those elements. So that means even if I go in and I create another InDesign document someday, there we go, and I now want to use that same layout, those same elements, I can go ahead and just simply drag those elements onto the page. And again, we'll go up here and we'll place them. And they come in individually selectable. So I can go in, for example, and select this uh, triangle that I did earlier. And I say, you know what? I'd love to have this one be uh, blue from my dolphin blue uh, library of colors or color themes. So these are changeable, selectable. I can pick any element I want, add it to the library, bring it into another InDesign document. I can share these elements even amongst other applications. So I can go back to, for example, uh, Photoshop and Illustrator and drag those elements in. Now, what if I want to add something from my mobile device? So for example, that camera is okay, but I've actually got a camera sitting right here. So let's go ahead and bring up Adobe Shape. And once I bring up Adobe Shape, I'm gonna go ahead and change the library that it's working with. So we're gonna go ahead and put it back in my library, which I've got some elements in there already. But we're just gonna go ahead and say that we want to use the camera. And once we have the camera up, we've got our nice camera there. And we'll just go ahead and snap it. And then from there, I can go ahead and just use my finger and paint out the part of the table that I don't want paint out part of the wall that I don't need and basically just keep just as much of the camera as I want without those other elements. There we go. And then once I go ahead and tell it, okay, that's what I want. Adobe shape will go ahead and convert this into a vector element. Now, of course, normally I would take this vector element into illustrator or maybe even Photoshop and continue working on it. Cause it's just a rough sketch at this point. But um, just to show you, since we're in InDesign, and I'm going to call it uh, what it is. It's a D810. We'll go ahead and save it. That's now syncing it with Creative Cloud with my, my, my library. And now if I head over to uh, back to InDesign here, and I scroll over down to my images, there's my D810 ready for me to go ahead and drag right into um, right into InDesign and use it as a vector element. And once again, like I said, this is vector, so I can scale it to my heart's content and do whatever else I want to do with it. So there you have it, the ability to work across multiple products, multiple applications, now bringing in Creative Cloud libraries. And I know what you're thinking. It's one last thing. Well, libraries. That's a generic term that InDesign has had for a long, long time. InDesign has had its own library feature. What about all my InDesign libraries? How does that work? Well, let's go open one. Let's go up File, Open. And let's go out to here and let's go in. I've got a library here. Here's one. So this is an, a standard InDesign library, and it works just like you would expect. It gives me the ability to drag in content and use that content. But that's an InDesign library, meaning it only works with InDesign. Well, you'll notice now your InDesign libraries in the bottom of the panel now have the ability to be converted into um, Creative Cloud libraries. So I can say convert this to a new library as my InDesign library if I want, or add it to an existing library. So if I say convert it, it's now making that library and adding those elements, or I only had the one element selected. So uh, in this case, I'd have to drag the other elements over, but I could have selected all the elements and then told it to convert that into a um, Creative Cloud library. And now, of course, I have the ability as a Creative Cloud library to collaborate or share this library with others uh, that I want to have access to those elements. 
So I can just invite others to this library. That library will show up in their library's panel and they'll be able to drag elements in and out or add elements or take elements and use those elements on their um, designs from my Creative Cloud library. So that's it for this episode of Adobe, Cre of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White. Hope you enjoy what's new in InDesign CC in the February 2015 update. Take care and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.